Hello, I'm Ed Bolts, the managing partner at the Law Office of John T. Orcutt, and with me today I have Craig Shapiro, who is one of our associates who handles a lot of our consumer rights matters. Craig, good to have you. Um, why don't we start with you telling us a little bit about yourself for our clients and for the staff and team who haven't met you before. Well, I've been an attorney for about 15 years. I originally come from Chicago. I moved here several years ago. Um, I represent consumers in cases against abusive debt collectors. Uh, generally, I represent only uh, the debt collectors or businesses. Um, I don't ever represent the debt collectors. I'm always on the consumer side. Um, I've taught other attorneys how to handle these types of lawsuits, and I do have a great deal of experience with them. Um, and so, what, what are the laws that you use to help our clients um, in, a, in conjunction with the, the, their bankruptcy? Well, there's the FDCPA, which stands for the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. It's a federal law that protects consumers against abusive debt collectors. And it's, since, since it's a federal law, it applies nationwide uh, and regulates all debt collectors. So when you say debt collectors, are you talking about like when your doctor's office calls about a past due bill or when Discover Card calls you because you're behind with them? No, unfortunately, it doesn't. it's not that broad. Uh, it only applies to debt collectors that... Uh, a company hires like if you don't if you don't pay a bill from your doctor or to discover card and then they hire an outside company uh, that outside company is a debt collector and those outside companies are the ones that are covered by the FDCPA and what about if they if um, a lawyer for for those for that a creditor is calling you is, is that covered by the FDCPA generally yes lawyers if they're representing uh, a creditor they are covered by the FDCPA and does the FDCPA and these related bit laws protect every kind of debt that people have or just some kinds? Uh, just some kinds. It does not apply to business debts in general. But what it does cover are consumer debts, which are those that are incurred for personal, family, or household purposes. That would be anything like those, like those credit cards. Uh, like your mortgage or rent on a personal residence. Um, some of the some of the debts that are, are harder to deal with in bankruptcy necessarily, like student loans or taxes. It does apply to student loans. It does not apply to taxes. It does not apply to business investments. It doesn't apply to fines or parking tickets. Um, it also doesn't apply to some of those uh, overpayments that you're getting for uh, unemployment insurance. Okay. And what sort of things does the FDCPA protect borrowers against? Uh, it provides a lot of protections. One is just generally abusive behavior. Uh, they can't call you and scream at you, uh, use profanities. Uh, debt collectors can't threaten to sue you unless they actually have a right to and they plan to. They can't threaten to take your house away unless they also have a right to and do plan to do that. Um, they can't lie to you about the law. Um, they can't lie to you about how much you owe. They can't add any money onto it uh, and onto how much you owe unless they're legally entitled to do that. Um, it also expands into a lot of privacy protections. Uh, they can't take money out of your account without your permission. Uh, they can't take um, any money that you don't actually owe. Uh, they can't try to convince you that you owe money that you don't owe. Um, there's a lot of ways that, that the FDCPA does provide protections. And how does this relate at all to people's credit reports and things like that? Because I know that increasingly for our clients, what, that, what appears on their credit report both before and after any bankruptcy is, is terribly important. It does. It does apply to credit reports, uh, and that's only, again, we're talking about debt collectors. So when a debt collector chooses to report something onto a credit report, uh, it has to report that information accurately. It has to provide uh, an accurate payment history if it chooses to provide that. Um, it cannot inflate the balance at all. Um, if you have told the debt collector that you dispute the debt and then it chooses to report anything about that debt, it must also include that the debt is disputed. And when do you see these sorts of problems and solutions that you can offer applying to our clients who are in, in, a, in or planning to file a bankruptcy? Well, with bankruptcy clients, the way I see it is frequently there are debt collectors who they will maybe place a telephone call to someone who has filed for bankruptcy. And they're generally not allowed to collect a debt after the, uh, the bankruptcy has been filed. Um, they also are not permitted to send a letter to you saying that you need to pay a debt after you have filed for bankruptcy. Um, and then going to after the bankruptcy, after you receive a discharge, they also cannot call you or send any letters saying that you need to pay any debts that have been discharged in the bankruptcy. And does this apply, you said this does apply in many cases to mortgage companies and the mortgage servicers. Um, how does that play out? 
in ba in a bankruptcy also. Sure. The time and when when they do apply, when the mortgage servicers do apply to the FDCPA, uh, it generally comes into play after the discharge, where you have a mortgage servicer that is collecting a, a mortgage balance. Um, where I, what I have seen is that they're after a discharge, mortgage servicers have attempted to collect ten thousand dollars more uh, in a, a balance owed, even though they had recently replied to the court that there was. The, the, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars less owed. Um, there are also times in bankruptcies where the debtor pays off a mortgage balance, um, or sometimes they pay the mortgage balance at the fair market value, such that they don't actually owe anything after the discharge. But then the mortgage servicers end up going ahead and claiming that they still owe tens of thousands of dollars. Now, one of the problems we have, most many of our bankruptcy clients already have, is how how can they, you know, affording to have a lawyer? How can a, how can they afford to have additional representation on top of the bankruptcy work that we do for this FDCPA type of claim? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the FDCPA provides that the debt collector actually has to pay the consumer's attorney fees. Uh, we will not ask for any money up front. Uh, we will advance all the costs of litigation. Uh, we then get paid our attorney fees only if we actually win the case. So only if we actually recover some money for our clients. Um, if we don't recover any money for our clients, then we don't get paid either. And what's the best way for, let's start with, for our prospective clients when they feel like they have a problem, for them to raise this to, to your attention and, or for our staff to get that to your attention, up, sort of up, up through the, the, the chain in our office? Sure. Uh, any of our clients should contact their post-legal representative, who will then get in contact with me. And after I take a look at the situation, then I may end up contacting our client directly and we'll move forward from there if there is a uh, case. And with respect to our staff, they should simply send me an email uh, providing me with some information. I may ask for some more, um, and then we'll move forward from there. Now, if there's a successful case, what, 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 what can a client expect to, to gain from this in terms of recovery and so forth? Sure. Um, consumers in cases like uh, under the FDCPA, they can expect to receive, uh, or they're entitled to receive at least, their actual damages, which can be anything from uh, if a debt collector has taken money out of, the, out of their account that they don't owe, if a debt collector has uh, convinced them to pay money that they don't owe, or if they've been harassed or abused so extensively by a debt collector that they end, that they end up going to see a doctor. And in a more complicated case like mortgage uh, where there's mortgages at stake, that may also lead to some sort of modification or some uh, some greater relief that where they offer to resolve the case. Sure, the sure. If we have a, a lawsuit against a mortgage servicer, if we want to resolve the case, um, j just about anything is possible, and a mortgage servicer frequently uh, will be able to modify the mortgage in a in a way that's beneficial to our clients. And lastly, perhaps it, in conjunction with the bankruptcy, if they do get a recovery, how does that? interplay with their bankruptcy? Do they, are they allowed to keep that money? Do they have to turn that over to the, to the bankruptcy case? Where, where, what happens to, our, to the client then? Well, it depends on when the lawsuit is filed. If it is filed solely, uh, if it's filed after the, after the bankruptcy discharge and it's based on everything that occurred after the bankruptcy, uh, then there's, there's no limit to what the, the, uh, our client can keep. Um, however, if it's filed during the bankruptcy because it's based on conduct that occurred during the bankruptcy, then it all depends on what we're able to exempt. Uh, for example, if the client has their full wild card exemption available, then we can use that wild card exemption in order to uh, exempt some of the funds. Great. Well, thank you, Craig. This is really an important way for us to be able to, to protect our clients and give them a way to um, gain some fairness when dealing with their creditors. And I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this to us this afternoon. Absolutely. I'm very glad to help. Thank you.